Let's talk about the tools that are available to you when you need to clean up an audio track. This is a production track. In this particular case, in Adobe Audition, we have on the left channel our boom microphone, on our right channel a lavalier microphone. Now, this is normally how it's recorded. If I'm not doing a stereo mix, if there was a stereo mix, I'd have two additional channels. But uh, what I would do first of all is go ahead and split them up. So in Adobe Audition, I'll right click and choose Extract Channels to Mono Files, just like that. Okay, so now I have my boom mic. I've just sort of cleaned things up. I cut the header off just for the purposes of this demonstration. And here's our lavalier microphone. So I have to choose which one of these I'm going to use. We're not gonna use both of them because if you use both of them, there's no benefit. Uh, you just increase the noise floor. So um, a lot of people think that stereo is better than mono. <laughs> and that, you know, it depends on what you're doing, but when you're capturing dialogue, uh, using a lav mic and a boom mic, there's very little benefit that I see in most cases to using both of them in the final piece. So let's first of all open up the spectral view. That's done by grabbing the little bar at the bottom and dragging that up. Here's again our lav mic, and here is our boom mic. Now, you can see the response is a little bit different. Um, I would say there's a little bit more um, going on in the higher frequencies here. There's a clear hum that this has picked up. The lav mic, on the other hand, um, appears to have a lot more going on down low, not as much up high. That's probably just due to its unique frequency response pattern. Um, let's also play through a little bit of it. This is a, um, this first part here is a phone notification, so like a mobile phone alerting that there's something, you know, a new text or something, and then one line of dialogue from the actress. And uh, we'll listen to it on both of these microphones, and that'll help us decide. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Okay, and then the lav mic. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Okay, a couple things I noticed right away. The lavalier microphone it has a little bit more clothing rustle in it, so that would be something that we'd have to clean up. Also, about halfway through her line of dialogue here, uh, this was actually shot in a hotel in one room, and it sounds like there is a room door out in the hallway closing in the middle of her <laughs> line here. Let me run through it again just so you can hear that. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. That was picked up on the lavalier, but the boom was able to reject that. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. For the most part. So I'd actually probably choose the boom mic in this particular case. Um, looks like there's less energy here down low that I'll have to clean up, and I don't have that issue with the door slamming. Incidentally, the notification will be replaced with some sound effects or fully, so I'm not too worried about that, but I do need this dialogue to be clean. So let's just look at the different tools that I might use here to clean up the boom track. First up is a high pass filter. Now, this is something that you can find under the filter and EQ parametric equalizer. And we have right here, HP is our high pass filter. And what I, this is going to do is just roll off or decrease or attenuate some of the very lowest frequencies here. And what we can do to find the best place to put that high pass filter is I will actually start playing through, through the track here and move this to the right until I get to a point where I feel like it's cutting into her dialogue. Um, and then I'll back off just a little bit. I don't want to cut into her dialogue, but I do want to get rid of all of this low energy down here, which is just noise. All right, so let's go ahead and play through and hear what we get. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Right around 200 hertz seems to be where we can actually get the most bang for the buck, so we'll be able to get rid of a lot of this red low frequency energy down here without cutting into her voice too much. So we're going to go ahead and unselect that and apply. And look what it did down there. Definitely cleaned that up. Okay, let's see if that made any difference audibly. Okay, there's still very much that um, sound from a fan, it sounds like. So we are going to need to address that. Um, let's just undo that. Let's get a measurement here, just out of curiosity. 
Average RMS is at minus 52. And then redo. Measure again. Average RMS is at minus 63. So it looks like there was definitely a difference there. Um, in terms of the signal, a lot of playback systems can't play all of that low energy, um, but a lot of them can. And so it just to get that out of the way is really helpful. So there's the first thing. Okay, we definitely hear some stuff still. So the next thing I would use is our dehum plugin. That's going to be under effects, noise reduction, restoration, and we want our dehummer. Okay, so what is what is a hum and what does it look like on a spectral chart? Well, <laughs> you see this horizontal line here? It's not terribly broad, but it's it's this one right here. That is most likely our hum. So what I want to do is find out what frequency that's at. And as I look over here, looks like it's maybe centered around 630 or so. So we're going to type in frequency 630 there. Um, we can choose how wide we want to cut that. Get skinnier as I go up. And the widest I can go is a Q of 30. And then we can choose how much we want to decrease it. Now, that's a little bit of an art. What I often find is that for things like this, you're probably best in the minus 10 dB range. If you get too extreme, you'll leave a hole there. And you can potentially start to affect the audio. Um, okay. So that's that. Secondly, you have this number of harmonics setting. And you'll notice when I set it to four, it actually shows some additional cuts up here. This is essentially a um, very much like an EQ filter, where you do some subtractive EQ. And uh, what, what typically happens with hums is that there can often be harmonics. So you will see uh, the fundamental sound down here, for example, but then you'll see harmonics that stack up above it with additional horizontal lines. And what this does for you is it already calculates the mathematical harmonic of the primary sound and puts cuts in those spots as well. And you can also kind of taper them off. So the higher ones, higher frequency ones may not need as much cutting. And so you can use this harmonic slope to change how much you cut those. So that's kind of interesting. In this case, we pretty much just have that one. The other ones, um, they look kind of diffuse. So I don't think they're really going to be something we want to take care of with this. Let's go ahead and play through this and see what it does. I'm going to listen to the hum only. Gotta, you may have to turn up quite a bit to hear that. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and uncheck the output hum only and go ahead and apply it to the entire file and see what happens visually and then audibly. Hmm, disappeared a little bit. Let's just undo that. I think I may have uh, missed the frequency a little bit. I may have been a little high. Let's come back in. Let's maybe drop that to 620. And apply again. And boom. Visually definitely taken care of. Let's hear what it sounds like now. Interestingly, it does seem to have taken away the whine of the fan a little bit. The, the sound of the air moving is still very much there, but the sound of the whine of the fan is gone. So that's actually quite good. I'm glad that, that made a difference there. Now, next up, we do see a little bit of blue haze up here, which means we have some really high frequency sounds that are kind of getting in there. And that's actually a feature of this particular microphone I've noticed. What I might do in that case is I might come back into my EQ, my parametric equalizer, this time I'm going to turn the high pass filter off, but I might turn the low pass filter on. That's the one at the top end that rolls the sound off a little bit. Whoops, I want to turn that one back off. Okay, let's play through this and see if I can tweak this and make any difference here. And again, we're going to run through the dialogue so we hear what happens there. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Let's go ahead and apply that to the entire file here and see what happens to the blue haze up here. Yeah, definitely cut it out some. Let's hear how the dialogue's sounding now. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Pretty good, pretty good. 
I think then the last thing we'll do here is a little bit of noise reduction and we'll just go ahead and pull out our handy noise reduction. Uh, here we go. So first we'll highlight this to get a noise print. Go ahead and click capture noise print. There we go. All right, now what I'm going to do here is go ahead and run through this, run through the audio, and I'm gonna tweak these settings here. So this is the noise reduction, uh, essentially the sensitivity or noise reduction strength as they call it here, and then the amount to reduce the noise by in terms of decibels. So I usually like to keep this at uh, pretty low, right around six dB here, and um, kind of move this back and forth. So let's see what happens. I actually may bump this up higher just to see what effect it's having, but then when I actually go to process, we'll pull it back down to six. All right, let's go ahead and run through it, and I may turn this output noise only so I can hear what the noise is doing. Let's do that and give it a go. Okay, uh, so we're going to go ahead and at 10, and 10 is our strength and our noise reduction, and then about 6 dB for our reduced by. Uh, again, what I want to do is you'll notice as I played through that, as it played the dialogue, if I have this output noise only checked and I'm hearing dialogue through there, that means I'm probably cutting too much. So I want to uncheck this. Let's go ahead and apply the noise reduction to the entire file. And you can see it lightened a lot of this up. Let's hear what it sounds like now. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Okay, we definitely still have some noise. I can definitely hear some fans still, um, but it's definitely better than it was before. Let's maybe do one more pass. Come back up to effects, noise reduction, noise. Okay, we'll get another, we'll get another read on the noise here. Capture the noise print. You can see it changed a little bit. So you'll definitely want to do that uh, for each pass. We'll unselect. Let's go ahead and run through here again. I'm going to do the output noise only, run through it, and kind of tweak the settings again. Probably going to go with the same settings again, just to, to be safe here. Now, the difference here is that, again, I'll uncheck this and deselect. The difference here of doing two passes versus one pass, you could say, you know, theoretically, shouldn't it be the same if you do one pass with the reduce by set to double what I've set it here? So instead of six, setting it at minus 12, or perhaps increasing the noise reduction to 20, doubling it. Well, the difference is, is that when you do two passes, you get a new noise print the second time. So you kind of tune the noise print each time, which is why I generally like to do a couple of passes and be a little gentler on each pass. So let's go ahead and run this again. And let's hear what it sounds like. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Okay, it has a little bit of a hollow sound. Let's just for grins and giggles, go back to the original and hear it. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. After. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. So there's an example of what you can do here in Adobe Audition. Now to be honest, I'm not loving the sound of this uh, cleaned up file. It is definitely not as noisy as the original, um, but this noise reduction in Adobe Audition is pretty good, but it's not uh, probably state-of-the-art. So let me just come over here into Rx and show you what a state-of-the-art system looks like. So you can do the same thing with your, your spectral view here. Let's go ahead and do the high-pass filter first. The 
again, while we're playing through, we are going to move this up and down to see where we get. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Okay, go ahead and process that. See, we cleaned some things up there. Let's get our dehummer out. Now, this one's a little bit different. I can actually have it suggest a frequency for a hum. It can go and look for it. And it actually says, oh, it's 612 hertz, which is interesting. Remember, we've settled on 620 hertz over in Audition. It actually found it here. So that's pretty interesting. You can also, again, choose the width. We actually go a little, what appears to be a little bit wider here. Oh, maybe not. It's showing 30 as well. And we're going to, again, we're just going to do one harmonic minus 10. Let's process that and see what happens. Too wide. Undo. Again. That looks better. Let's see if it did anything for us audibly. Before. And after. Still there a little bit. I'm going to go do another round here. See it left a gap? Let's undo that. We don't want to go that hard. Maybe just minus five. That's a little more subtle. What I'm hearing now sounds much more like uh, moving air and not so much of the whine of the fan, so. Okay, next up, let's do our voice denoising. Um, this is what I would consider state of the art in terms of denoising capability. So let's go ahead and just highlight that there and let's preview. You can go in a couple different modes. You can learn just like you can in Adobe Audition. So if I highlight this and click learn, it identifies that. Then let's go ahead and play through this section here. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. You can hear it kick in, so it kind of plays it without and then it plays it with. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. And again, I'm doing six decibels of reduction here. You can see that I'm it's 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 doing quite nicely, actually. <laughs> so I'll unselect process this. Visually, you can see it changed things a little bit. Actually, what we did forget to do is the EQ up on top. Let's turn our high pass filter on, turn our low pass filter on. Let's get a preview. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. You may hear that, you may not, depending on how good your hearing is. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Okay, so I'm still definitely hearing some fan noise. Let's go ahead and maybe do another pass with the denoiser here. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. And process again. So this is what we ended up with in RX. Again, this is an expensive application. I realize not everyone can afford it, but I just wanted to illustrate the kind of the difference here. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. Versus in audition. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. To me, there still seems to be sort of a hollow sounding uh, fan noise here in audition, but that's not so much the case in RX. Oh yeah, I've got to finish booking our vacation. So again, there's an overview of the tools you can use for dialogue denoising for film. Hope that was helpful. Go ahead and leave any questions you have down below. Get out there and get some great audio. We'll talk to you soon.